Mixcad lets you add pictures to your drawings, and the way to do that is to go to the Insert menu, choose Attach Raster Image, and then you can navigate to the folder in which the image exists. Now, I've already got one here in this folder. I selected, click Open. This is just like inserting a block or an external reference, so if you want, you can uh, specify the insertion point, but I'm going to have it as 000, specify a scale, uh, 1, 1 is good enough for me, rotation angle, not rotated is fine for me, and then if you have geocoding information, that's essentially the longitude and latitude, which would place it uh, relative to its position on Earth in your drawing, then you can uh, add that as well. When you're done specifying everything, click OK, and there it is. Now that the image is in your drawing, you can manipulate it. But before you can manipulate it, you have to select it. And you can't select the image itself. No, you have to select its border. And that's that thin black line you see around there. Once you select it, it turns dashed and has the green grips. Now if you have a hard time selecting it, there's two alternatives. One is to use crossing window, and that'll select it. And the other one is in a command and specify the last object added to the drawing. Now, once you have it selected, you can uh, use the green grips to resize it, and that's about all the grips can do. So I'm going to undo that resizing. If you want to do something like move the drawing, you still have to use the move command. The, uh, I've entered in M for move, select entities, last, and you see the image is selected. Press enter to continue, and then pick two points to move the image. You can give the image a new boundary, and that's done with the image clip command. So once again, asking for to me to select the image, I'm going to press L for the last item, and there's the option for a new boundary. So you can have rectangular or polygonal. Rectangular is just a new rectangular boundary. So I'm going to press Enter to accept that, and click two points, and there we have the new boundary. Let me go undo, repeat the image clip command, and new boundary, this time uh, a polygonal one. So polygonal one just has uh, many sides to it. I'm going to uh, click here, 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 and just keep on going like this until I've fully outlined the area of interest. Press enter, and there's your polygonal boundary. Again, you can select the boundary and then change its endpoints to change the look of the boundary. This boundary is also called a clipping because it uh, hides portions of the image. Now over here in the properties palette, we can change how it clips. So for example, clip inverted, change it to yes, and now we see everything outside the boundary. Turn that back on. We can uh, turn the clipping on and off. So there it is off and we see the full picture again. And then similarly we can turn off the entire image itself. This is useful if the picture it takes up a lot of memory and is causing the program to slow down. Finally, let's take a look at what you can do to the look of the image itself. And once again, we're going to be over here in the Properties panel. You can see there's three ways to adjust the look. One is the fade, and that one's very useful if you don't want the image to be so prominent in your drawing. So here's a value of 90, and it's almost invisible. Now let's try 50 and it's a little bit faded. So depending on how prominent you want it to be, you can give it values between 50 and 90. Let me just change that back to zero so we can see it. Contrast is a bit of an odd one. I'd call it an artsy one because if you crank it up to say 90, you get this kind of posterized look. And if you uh, dial it back down to 10, you get this uh, very gray looking one. As a matter of fact, I never touch contrast because it's not terribly useful, I don't think. And then brightness is uh, a variant of fade. Let's stick in 10 to see what that looks like. So you can see there it's extremely dark. Let's try 75, quite light, 90, lighter again. When it comes to these settings, uh, I think for most drafters, the fade value is the most useful one. Thank <laughs> you.